So we heard that Lutzen's applying for a brand new sup. So we thought we'd teach him a thing or two about stand-up paddleboarding. What do you mean it's not about stand-up paddleboarding? What is going on Midwest skiers and riders? Matthew Zabransky with MidwestSkiers.com, your source for all things skiing and riding in the Midwest. And if you're new around here, welcome and we're super happy that you're here. Make sure you like all of our social media pages as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our content as we're going to be ramping things up as we edge closer and closer to the season. Oh, oh, oh. With over 800 feet of vertical drop, 95 runs in three separate peaks, Lutzen is one of the biggest ski resorts in the Midwest, but these stats could even be getting more impressive. Now that I like. Last spring, the U.S. Forest Service and Superior National Forest announced that they would be conducting an environmental study to examine the possible approval of a SUP for the expansion of Lutzen Mountains. And contrary to popular belief, a SUP stands for Special Use Permit. This allows entities such as ski resorts to use national forest land to expand to build more skiable terrain. And I want to stop right here and just let you know that this is a pretty common thing for ski resorts outside of the Midwest. In fact, there are over 120 ski resorts that are located on national forests. And although it's a lot less common to see this in the Midwest, gaining permits to use public land for ski resorts is a pretty common thing. The process starts with a draft that is then reviewed and opened up for comments that are then considered for the final version. This final study will then be used to make the decision on whether or not the permit will be issued. On September 9th, 2021, the draft of the study was officially made available to the public and over the next 45 days, the US Forest Service will be accepting comments from the public. We will go over how to submit your feedback a little bit later, but first let's talk about the proposed alternatives. I want to know. Now I'll stop and say right now, I'm not going to cover this in depth. The draft was over 340 pages long, so I'm really just going to focus on the highlights here. And I think that's all you care about anyway. But if you wanted to review the entire draft, I'll be sure to link it below. Now before I dive into all the details, I want to let you know that recently Lutzen has decided to pursue Alternative 3 versus Alternative 2. They feel it'll conserve the land in a more responsible way while still addressing some of the issues and allowing them to expand. And although I am selfishly disappointed about not having more steep runs on the backside of Moose, it just shows how much Lutzen cares about this process. And even though this option is a technically off of the table, I will cover the entire study including that option so you can better understand why they are moving forward with Alternative 3. I just want to give a little background on why this expansion is needed in the first place. It's easy to look at Lutzen and say, oh, it's massive, it's one of the biggest in the Midwest, and it doesn't need to be expanded, and although that's one thought, there are certainly some other things to consider before jumping to that conclusion. There are a number of pros that would come out of an expansion from Lutzen, but a couple that really stuck out to me was the addition of more expansive day parking and an increase in beginner and expert terrain. Anybody that has been to Lutzen can recognize the need for both of these elements. Lutzen is the absolute king when it comes to intermediate terrain, but comparing their intermediate terrain to their beginner terrain and even their expert terrain, there's a huge difference in how much they have to offer. And although it isn't terrible by any means, the addition of more beginner terrain would really, really round out the variety of trails at Lutzen. Second, their parking, especially for day trippers or those staying off-site, is far from ideal. There are only a couple of lots in street parking and it can often be confusing and very inconvenient for skiers and riders not staying on site. But don't worry, both of these are addressed in the alternatives, so let's dive right into these three different options. The first alternative is the easiest to explain because it's not doing any type of expansion to the resort. Now this doesn't mean that they wouldn't be able to expand on their private property, but it would mean no permit would be given to the resort to expand outside their currently owned land. Their privately owned land can be seen by the black and white dashed line. But there's not much to cover here, so let's just jump right into Alternative 2. Alternative 2 is the most ambitious of the three options. Under this alternative, Lutzen would add seven new lifts, a surface lift, and would almost double their skiable acreage with an addition of 174 acres to the resort. They would also add 149 acres of glades as well. Starting over on Eagle Mountain, they would add a brand new base lodge and maintenance facility complete with 630 parking spots. 
a new quad chair and surface lift would service this brand new area. This area would open up more beginner terrain and would offer up a great parking option for day trippers as you would be able to easily walk from the lift to access all the skiing and riding that Lutzen has to offer. Now in order to accomplish this expansion, a snowmobile trail would have to be extended and moved a little bit south. You can see the existing snowmobile trail noted by purple on the map and the rerouted trail as light blue. Over on the front side of Moose Mountain, you will notice a number of additions as well. There would be the addition of a brand new base lodge, maintenance facility, along with another additional 630 parking spots. There we would see the addition of two new lifts on the front side of Moose, including a six-pack chair, labeled as Lift 2 on this diagram. This area would open up more intermediate terrain, as well as more gladed areas located between those marked trails. Now, in this report, they did not give a ton of specifics. For example, whether or not a chair was going to be high speed or not, you kind of have to use your imagination for these elements. Imagination. Lutzen has stated that they would love to install more high speeds and potentially a gondola chair combo, but a lot of that will depend on the environment when they actually install these lifts. At the top of Moose Mountain, they are proposing a new on-mountain chalet. They did provide some basic renderings to give you an idea of what it may look like as well. Moving on to the backside of Moose Mountain, this alternative would add three new quads and steep expert level terrain. In order to complete this expansion, however, a couple of hiking trails would have to be relocated near the summit of Moose Mountain. The old trails are noted by the orange sections on the diagram, and the rerouted trails are noted in blue. It's also worth noting that this would require cutting down more trees, specifically older growth cedars, which is part of the reason why Lucen probably is not going to move forward with this plan. All said and done, this alternative would bring 7 new lifts, 1 surface lift, over 1200 new parking spots, 2 new base lodges, a new on-mountain chalet, and more expansive beginner and expert terrain. But let's take a look at the alternative that Lutzen will be moving forward with, hopefully, and that's alternative number 3. Alternative number 3 is very similar to alternative number 2. In fact, the entire beginner area and base lodge at Eagle Mountain would remain exactly the same. The expansion at Moose Mountain, however, will look quite a bit different. Over at Moose Mountain, you will notice that under this alternative, there would be no development of the backside of Moose Mountain. This alternative would mean no cut ski trails on the backside of Moose Mountain, which hikers and outdoor enthusiasts have expressed could jeopardize the view when hiking on trails north or northwest of Lutzen Mountains. Instead of having runs on the back, there would be an additional lift added south of Lift 2, which is labeled as Lift 7 on the diagram. This would open up a few more intermediate runs and glades in that area compared to Alternative 2, but would lack the addition of those runs on the backside of Moose Mountain. The addition of parking, a base lodge, and an on-mountain chalet would remain the same compared to Alternative 2, however. Under Alternative 2, five new lifts would be added, one surface lift, two new base lodges with additional parking spaces, and it would add beginner and intermediate terrain, but would not really add a lot when it comes to expert terrain. This alternative, however, does leave the entire backside of Moose Mountain untouched and works a lot better on preserving the sensitive forest areas through legacy patches, which can be seen on the maps and diagrams in between these ski runs colored light green. This plan takes a lot more care to conserve the land that Lutzen would potentially get from the National Forest. And I think the fact that Lutzen is openly going to pursue Alternative 3 if this does get approved just shows how much they actually care about the environmental impact they'll have. And of course, as you guys probably would expect, the expansion is expected to increase the local economy as well. The projected numbers are as follows. Under Alternative 3, visitation is expected to go up 159% over the next 25 years, with 754 full-time equivalent jobs produced. This would bring in about $22.9 million in labor income, $66 million in sales, and just over $36 million to the GRP of Cook County. And what does this all actually mean? Well, it means an increase in new yearly jobs, big increase in visitation, and over doubling of Lutzen's GRP and taxes on both the state and federal levels. And before we dive into the timetable of the possible expansion, I do want to point out that there have been some environmental concerns brought up about these expansion plans. This draft literally covers almost everything, from the impact of the spruce fir woodlands to the Canadian lynx, Literally everything is covered, 
and I think seeing the results of this is what pushed Lutzen to go towards Alternative 3. Now, I'm not claiming to be any type of environmental expert, but from paging through the 344 page document, nothing jumped out to me as extremely intrusive or invasive. Alternative 3 offers a good option for those concerned about cutting multiple runs through Moose Mountain, and in my opinion, the social economic gain coupled with getting more people outdoors would dramatically outweigh the small impact that Alternative 3 would have on the environment. Additionally, I think the fact that Lutzen has willingly decided to go with Alternative 3 just shows how careful they are being when looking at these plans. That said, I trust Lutzen to make the proper decision and expand in an environmentally friendly way. Now this is just my opinion and you are certainly entitled to your own, and I urge those concerned to read through the detailed impacts of these expansion options. Just click on the link below and scroll to page 148. Here you can read through pages and pages of detailed findings and make a decision for yourself. Okay, 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 I know what your next question is gonna be. When is this all gonna happen and when can we be skiing these brand new runs? Well, as you would expect, this is gonna take some time to complete. In fact, the total project could take 20 plus years to complete. But the draft did give a rough outline of when to expect these improvements if the permit is approved. Lutzen would start with the Eagle Mountain expansion that would include that new base area, lift, and surface lift. They would expect that project to take about 5 years with a completion date around 2027, give or take a couple of years. The next step would be the completion of Lift 3 and the terrain associated with that area. This is estimated to take another 5 years, putting us at about 2032. Then about 5 years later, they would work on completing Lift 2 and the terrain associated with that area, and that would put a completion date on that area at about 2037. And finally, the addition of the remaining lifts along with the Moose Mountain Base Lodge, and that's expected to be completed about 20 years from approval, or about 2042. So as you guys can see, this expansion is part of a legacy plan to ensure that Lutzen is around for years to come, but it all starts today and you can help. The Forest Service has opened up a 45 day public comment period, which they will use to help create the final version. To submit your feedback, head on over to the link below before October 25th, 2021. You can also email them directly or even mail in your feedback if people still do that. They even have stamps anymore? But there you guys go, a brief summary of Lutzen's proposed expansions, what they'll be moving forward with, and how you guys can help. If you want to learn more about anything that we discussed today, I'll be sure to drop some links below. And of course, be sure to get your feedback submitted before that October 25th deadline. Let's do it, okay? I hope all of you guys have a great week, pray for snow, and until next time, I'll see you guys out there.